hi 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 welcome to world of braiding and extensions and today we got something really really exciting for you my name is joy fido and welcome on board okay so why is this so exciting um this has been one of the most sought after things by you our viewers asking for this to be done um why because i'm always talking about it i'm always talking about wigs and i'm always wearing wigs and people want to know how i create my own homemade wigs and then my clients are always coming and getting their wigs done but the curiosity has been so how is it done and so today i've decided i'm going to show you how we make our homemade wigs so like we've done in one of the videos we explained to you there are major major main two types there's the homemade wigs and then there's the factory made wigs so i could go for that to say there's also the other type which is the we'll probably say very professionally made wigs where you know they stitch one strand at a time and they knot it and this that's the one that you get the full lace wig and mostly people in theater do them i have i have a one of my students who used to work or works with the theater and she sits there and creates wigs for all the actors so you see in movies when people wear different they even create beards and you know everything can be created and she is so interesting because she doesn't throw away any piece of hair for her every piece of hair can be used for something sideburns and you know but we're not talking that type of wig. We're talking regular wig that people can wear, you know, to work, to wherever. The one I'm wearing on my head, I created it. Um, most of the hair, you know, the hairs that I give to my clients, they have choices. Either I create it or we get them factory made wigs. So today we're going to be sharing with you what we know about how we create our wigs. So I'll start by showing you the materials that we use to create the wigs. So one of the first things you look at is the head that you're going to use to create the wigs. And this is my favorite one. They're just the polyfiller heads. They're very, very light. And then they have the female head and the male head. I prefer the male head. Why? Because they are really big compared to the female head. The female heads are really small. And they don't tend to give me as much room as i want to work with but this is what happens if you continuously use them because they're polyfiller the more the needles are going in it starts to poke into <laughs> this cup but it just shows a lot of use and this is like brand new so this is what you will experience the more you use your polyfiller head now there's another type which is you see this one they call them the wig making block i have not really used this because my problem is i can't see like a face to it um so that really confuses me and i want to be able to put put it on the head so that i can really see where that is going um for example this is a a, um, a wig cap ready for for weaving which i'm going to show you how i put it on and the little things i want to see is how the face really sits and i want to make sure that my wig cap is sitting really well such that when i get the center part in i get it right so without this nose guiding me i could be anywhere and that is what i have problems with with the other head so those are the choices you may have to look at and some people are happy with it some people work with it but not me so the next thing we look at is the wig cap so the wig cap um they come in different styles um which i've taken my time to look at there's the one that says spandex and there's the one that says dome style and what you find is um the you again apart from this particular brand there's so many other types out there you just decide what you want to go for but for me in particular um i found that i really don't like the spandex because the spandex kind of restricts me when it comes to um 
you know it doesn't fit all sizes okay i would not say i don't like it for reasons there are people with smaller head and there are people with bigger heads so this works for me for a bigger head client and this works for me for a smaller head client that's what i would say about them so but most of the time i you you naturally will end up having more bigger head clients than smaller head clients so you have to think about that well decided um what they do is they are stretchable you can see the expandable short look or whatever so they're expandable and they start telling you things like they're breathable and all of that uh the issue with some of them is depending on the fabric they use when you wash it it doesn't dry quick it takes a bit longer to dry or when you shampoo your hair so those are the things you have to consider but this has been the best one for me compared to all the other ones that i've tried working with in the past okay so the next big thing is the tea needles tea needles they are called because they look like tea so you get them as much as you can um they are absolutely necessary when you're creating your wigs because that is where they go in they go straight into the scalp and hold the dome um the wig cap down so for instance when i start putting the hair in i will hold that down and hold that down so it holds the, the wig cap down for me to be able to work with so without this you will not be able to do the work you don't need the regular needle because what happens see the good thing with the tea needle is they can they don't go in see that that stops it so that's why you need that so apart from the tea needle of course the next thing is your needle is your thread um is your scissors uh again this one you might you might need this to when you finish to kind of like create your sections very clearly so you are able to work with it or get the kind of look you want um i'm not i'm not really apart from what i tend not to do remember in one of the videos we shows you we showed you some of the things that could go wrong you you try your best not to create too much of a section because the more you use that hair and you brush it the more hair may be dropping off eventually so if you create too much of a wider section from the beginning you have already ruined your hair so i don't open too much of a section next thing is probably your tape because you just want to know the measurement of the head but when you work with this wig caps you don't really need that because they are one size fit all so it's for you to just know what is a large size large head or what is a small head so if you were looking at your tape and you're trying to measure your client's head um most times with that wig cap you don't really need it because it's going to stretch but if you use another type of wig cap that may work so i don't really use the tape at this moment next thing we look at is the band the band is absolutely necessary this is how they come in a big roll so once we're done with the hair we put a band into the wig you remember when people worry about the hair, will the wig fall off this is the band that helps to hold it in place and most times when we get the hair in we then do our extra work in, in, in place where we then create put the combs in so these are the combs to make sure the hair um the wig sits in well into your head like clip it into your hair and then the other thing we look at mostly this for me once this is in place i'm happy and i'm okay and ready to go so then we've talked about the thread again De depending on the type of hair we're looking at you change the color to suit the hair and then if you were looking at blonde this is blonde so different colors for different uh, colors of hair and that's generally our materials so the wig cap is on remember we said all you do is get it from the pack and just put it on the head and press it really take it really down this is why i like the big head just take it as far farther down as possible the the whole idea because it's stretchy it just holds the hair really really allows the cap to be as big as you want it to be and so the first thing i would then do is pin it all down so that So that i can start stitching so i'll hold it down there 
and just hold in many places so it doesn't move from where I've kept it. Okay, so we cap is in place. Now the next thing is the hair that you want to work with. So the first thing you look at is the closure. Closure becomes your first thing. Now one of the things you're going to find when you start ordering hair, especially with the with the um, with the factory made hairs, what they tend to do is they give you the different lengths that they, I mean, um, volume that they have. Um, so density, they call it. So they give you the different d density that they have. And um, when you order the hair in, I'll show you, I'll show you the hair, what I'm trying to talk about. So let's say hair like this, this is a factory made wig. Uh, which I've shown in another video. So this is um, this is the frontal, frontal, and then this is the regular back of the hair. These hairs are weighed, and what they tend to tell you is the density of the hair. The weight of the hair creates the density of the hair. So what they're saying is the amount of hair they put in here would depend on how heavy this hair is. So this is what happens. There are two types of clients they look at. There's a black client or the black woman, and then there's a typical Caucasian woman. Why do they have it in that format? We black women, we tend to like a lot of volume in our hair. Because for us, if we were wearing a weave, we put a lot of hair in. So we don't like hair that's sitting on and looking very thin on our head. So because of that, the density we would normally go for would be from 150 from 150 is the least density you should be looking for. But what you tend to find is the Caucasian clients, their density is usually 120. They really hate hair that's heavy because their hair is extremely light. So it doesn't sit as heavy as we tend to prefer. So when you're creating a wig, you need to consider that. Consider who you're making this wig for and how much volume you want to put in. So if it's you find that for us most times we're looking at three bags two and a half bags and when i say bags i mean things like this a bag of hair um what i just opened now was just the closure so this is a regular bag now what we tend to find is a bag is about 100 grams in it. so we're looking at 300 grams if you were using three bags or yes or two and a half bags so that's again 250 grams but when you are buying regular head of hair my wig just dropped so this is a bag which is usually about 100 grams and then if you were buying ready-made factory made hair i don't think they go more than two bags if we're looking at 120 grams so Consider that depending on who you're making this wig for. Uh, but for you, if you are a black person and you just want good head of hair on your head, you need at least two and a half bags. Like this one, I think I put in about three, three bags, excluding the closure. So what that tends to do is give you a lot of volume that you can style up and do whatever you want with it. You don't want the hair to, to be thin considering that you're going to be brushing the hair from time to time so that's what the bag looks like and that's what the closure looks like okay so first thing you do you take your closure remember the nose we talked about so you make sure the closure sits directly on top of the nose and then you pin it down Again, remember there's, there's a point to where the baby hair starts, which is there. The baby hairs can be taken back at any time. It's not a problem. Your focus is where it starts. And so you pin that down as well.
What did I do with the pin? Okay, hold that there. Okay, so you pin that down. And then you look at the other side. See that right on where where the cap starts. And you make sure everything is completely flat down. Completely flat down and you pin it down. So watch everything that's there. And then what I tend to do is I press all of it down, making sure that nothing is sitting up. And do the same on this side. And you find that lots of people just go into creating these wigs without really understanding what they're creating because all they're thinking is, oh, well, it's only stitching, so I can just stitch and stitch. And I get people bring me the most sad looking wigs and what I end up doing is take it all out and redo the whole thing. So that's just waste of everybody's time. So you see that you stretch that out completely and what I do is I pin them down still. So it's all held down. That's the whole plan. So once I've held it all down, then I'm going to lift that side. You see that? So I'll follow that too and hold it all down. And I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. So what I want you to see is how the type of precision this takes, the shape it takes. Think of these lines and that line. So you see how that sits right in the middle of both lines. That is absolutely important. And once you've got that, then you pin it all down. All the way down because now you're ready to stitch it down. You also pin the whole front down so it doesn't lift and make sure everything is sitting really flat down. So this is how I start the stitching. So you get your needle, usually I go with a C needle. Now if you come here for training, especially in wig weave making, this then becomes a lot easier. Take your needle, put it in and let it face up, always facing up. And when it goes in, you make sure you push in the hair and needle comes out. So you pull through. So what you've done, you've taken a piece of the fabric and then a piece of the hair and then you knot. And not again. Now this is the one thing that still I still am um, deciding what I want to do. So if I if this client wanted this hair colored, I've had instances where I color it first before I weave it on or stitch it on. But I've decided I you know I still decide which one should I do first. Should I stitch the hair in first before I color it. And I have my reasons why I think I should stitch it first before I color it, because then I know exactly where the hair sits. So most times I've had to just color it and then stitch and then it's not sitting exactly how I would have wanted it. So that's something you can think about when you start creating your wigs. So again, I'll put that needle in that same point and I'm stitching down. You notice I didn't start right from the beginning. I went in there. So now I'm going to go forward. So 
So needle goes in, thread goes over it, and then you pull it through. And that's how you carry on with your stitching. Sometimes this need, um, if you have too much thread, they have a habit of knotting. So you have to be very careful with the amount of thread you take on. And that's what we're going to do until we stitch it all the way down. Okay, so what you can see that I've done here, I've stitched right from there. Remember, I started from here, went that, and then went backwards. So it kind of gives you a double stitching here, and then you carry on. We carry on stitching until halfway. So we stop halfway. And then this time, I got a new needle, because that's that's the same old needle i was using i got a new needle and do exactly the same thing as what i did there now the reason for that is to make sure it sits completely flat because if i carry on with that i may end up shifting it to one side so that's why it's stopping halfway and then i'm going to carry on stitch this part and stop halfway there too my needles acting funny. I can always get another one. I'll change this needle. So what you're going to find is with the pin sitting there, it will be a nightmare getting your needle past them. Um, not because they won't let you, but because they just stand in the way and kind of like block your work. But it's all part of, it's all part of what you have to do. So just give it your best. Um, you need both of them. You need the pins to hold things in place for you. And your needle needs to come in so again exactly like i did last time um keep pushing any hair that tries to get in your way out of the way you knot it and so we're gonna do what we did last time so i'm gonna stitch forward and then stitch backwards So with the stitching, in as much as I say, it's not the easiest tax to take on, the, the closure stitching is the most difficult. And if you're doing frontal as well, the frontal stitching is the most difficult. Regular stitching is all right. It's not a problem. But once you get this in, the rest becomes easy and then that's like halfway of your hair done so that's in as well and then I'll carry on and do exactly what I did on the other side okay so you can see I've stitched that side and now the two needles are meeting so this is one needle this is another needle so now what I'm going to do, see that we wanted it to be just simply flat, as flat as that. Because if you carried on, you would have pushed the fabric to start edging down and pushing further down away from you. So what we wanted was for both of them to come and then meet in the middle. So you can see that shows we've done a good job. So one, this needle will then carry on that way, we'll finish it up there. And then this needle will carry on that way and finish. So it's like we've done double stitching but without using one needle. Okay, so what we've done, we've gone both ends. So the other needles come down here and these ones come down there. So what's gonna happen now, we take one needle off. You will notice I have not done anything with the front, with here. You do not stitch there at all. All you're stitching is just the sides and that's it. Do not stitch the front not so. this off now so you you come back a bit for to the back you're not going try not to not try it in front 
because when you finish and you're not in front there will be bits of thread hanging in in her face and you don't want that okay so our thread comes up and instead of completely pulling it out you hold some bits with you and then you knot it and so again if you've done a weave course this is where the stitching part becomes easy for you so all knotted and then you cut this side off so that side's completely gone off now this side still here and what I've done I've stitched it right to the very edge and this is when we now add the next stage so by this time we're completely done with the closure now we're going to start stitching at the back 